This is Professor Rogers. In this presentation, we look at the relationship between the one-way ANOVA and OLS regression and show how this knowledge allows us to put categorical independent variables into our regression model. I will start with the example from the one-way ANOVA video. In that video, we established that the log of the violent crime rate varies by region of the country. In OLS regression, I use dummy variables for each region rather than the region variable as a whole. I enter only three of the four dummy variables as independent variables. I drop one of the variables because all four variables together would create collinearity. The variable that I dropped is northeast, and this becomes my reference category. Here is the output. We can use the parameters from our regression to reconstruct the mean values of each region. To see how this works, I have laid descriptive statistics by region side by side with the regression coefficients. In the regression model, what we normally call the slope is in the case of dummy variables an adjustment to the intercept. In the case of our example, it represents the difference between the region and the reference category northeast. We do not interpret the beta of a dummy variable as positive or negative. Rather, we interpret it relative to the reference category. The statistical significance is based on the null hypothesis that the difference between the reference category and the region is zero. In the regression model, what we normally call the slope is in the case of dummy variables an adjustment to the intercept. In the case of our example, it represents the difference between the region and the reference category northeast. We do not interpret the beta of a dummy variable as positive or negative. Rather, we interpret it relative to the reference category. The statistical significance is based on the null hypothesis that the difference between the reference category and the region is zero. We can recover the value of each region by adding the beta to the constant. The value of the mean of Midwest is the constant of the equation 5.527 plus the coefficient for Midwest, which is 0.196. The interpretation is that being in the Midwest increases the log of the violent crime rate by 1.96. The mean of South is the constant 5.527 plus 0 0.480, which equals 6.007. The mean of west is the constant 5.527 minus 0.266, which equals 5.793. Further evidence of how one-way ANOVA and simple OLS regression are related can be seen laying the ANOVA tables from the two models side by side. Notice in our example, we get the same result. Categorical and numeric independent variables can be run side by side in the same model. This model is sometimes referred to as an ANCOVA, standing for analysis of covariance. An ANCOVA can be run using the regression procedure, the univariate procedure, and the generalized linear models procedure. Let's start with the regression procedure. Here we can run an ANCOVA model simply by listing both types of variables as independence in the command dialog box. We interpret the output by combining the techniques of the two different kinds of models. The constant combines the y-intercept and the mean of the reference category. The betas for region measure the distance of each region from the reference category. They are not positive or negative. Rather, their sign indicates whether they are above or below the mean of the reference category. The beta for poverty rate is interpreted as a slope. A second way to run an ANCOVA is to use the univariate procedure. In the dialog box for the univariate procedure, put the dependent variable in the box for dependent variable. Here is where the log of the violent crime rate goes. The categorical variable goes in the box for fixed factors. The entire variable can be placed in there, not the block of dummy variables. It is possible to put multiple categorical variables in this box. Here is where the variable region goes. Numeric variables are called covariates in this procedure. Here is where the variable poverty rate goes. 
Unlike the regression procedure, we then need to specify the model in the second dialog box. By default, the model box is set to run a full factorial model, which includes all possible interactions between variables. We look at factorial models in a separate video. In this example, we will turn off the interactions and run what is called the main effects model. On the right, we see the model set for main effects. The first step in doing this is to change the type of the model from interaction to main effects. The second step is to drag or toggle each variable into the model box on the right hand side of the dialog box. Finally, under univariate options, select options of interest. I often choose at the bare minimum the descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size, observed power, and parameter estimates. The top part of this slide shows the parameters from the univariate procedure, while the bottom table is the equivalent table from the regression procedure. Notice that the columns for unstandardized betas, t, and the statistical significance of the parameters are present on both tables, but because the reference categories are different, the coefficients are different. Instead of the standardized beta, the univariate procedure generates the partial eta squared which is the proportion of the variance explained by the parameter. Its interpretation is based on the squaring of the thresholds for the standardized beta. In other words, the partial eta squared has a small effect with a value of 0.01, a medium effect at 0.09, and a strong effect at 0.25. The tests of between subjects effects table is similar to the ANOVA table in regression and its footnotes include the R-squared and adjusted R-squared. In the lower left-hand corner, I have included the model summary table from the regression model. And note the R-squared and adjusted R-squared are the same as the footnote for tests of between subjects effects. The significance of the fit of the model overall is summarized in the row corrected model at the top of the between subjects table. The statistical significance of 0 0.020 is the p-value for the overall model, much the way the significance of the f-ratio is for the regression procedure. This table includes a partial eta squared for a block of dummy variables in aggregate. In this example, there is a single row for all the region variables combined. A third way to run this model is to use the generalized linear models procedure. Here the user needs to customize this model. For OLS regressions, including ANCOVAs, the default option in which linear is marked under scale response is correct. Once ready, go to the next tab on the top. The screen to which one turns is the response tab. Here one selects the dependent variable. Then go to the predictors tab and select the independent variables. Categorical variables go into the factors box. Numeric variables go into the covariates box. Unlike the univariate procedure, one can right-click on a factor variable and under category order select whether the first or last category in the variable is the reference category. If you conclude you want to use a different category, you have to create your own block of dummy variables. In the model screen, move the variables from the factors and covariates to the model box. And in the case of this example, set the type in the middle of the dialog box to main effects. Finally, check the statistics you want under the statistics tab. Here I select my favorite set of options, case processing summary, descriptive statistics, model estimation, goodness of fit statistics, model summary statistics, and parameter estimates. The parameter estimates from this model are in the top table shown here, and compared to the output from the regression procedure, which is shown at the bottom. Note how the block of dummy variables for region now has the same reference category, and thus gets the same coefficients in both versions of the model. One of the drawbacks of this procedure is the goodness of fit table. Notice that the statistics that we normally use, the R and R squared, are not present. Let's look at what univariate and GLM give us. 
Univariate provides output very similar to regression with the exception of reference category for a dichotomous variable. Generalized linear models allow for corrections to the order of dichotomous variables, but give different goodness of fit statistics. Finally, there is a need to recode a categorical variable into a block of dummy variables if order of categories does not have reference value as first or last category.